In this live stream, we'll learn how to put anything in your macOS menu bar by writing an XBar plugin, which was previously known as BitBar, using JavaScript and Node.js. So let's get straight into it. Go into my terminal. First of all, since we're writing it using JavaScript, although you can use other languages like Python, Ruby, shell script, whatever, I'll of course need Node.js installed. So if you have Homebrew, you want to do home, uh, you want to do brew install Node. I already have Node installed, as you can see over here. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to install the XBar cask. So we want to do brew install XBar, just like that. And now it'll be downloading if ca the cask isn't already installed, and then it will install the cask. And cool, XBar was successfully installed. Excellent. So you want to open XBar next. So to open it, you can do command space to open up your spotlight search and then type XBar, just like that. And then when you hit enter, you'll see this. XBar can't be opened because it was from an unidentified developer. So to enable it, what you want to do is you can go to your security preferences by going to your Mac OS menu bar, hit the Apple logo, then click system preferences. And then go into security and privacy. And then you'll see that in the general tab, so make sure you have that selected, X bar was blocked and click open anyway. And then click open. And then once that's done, it says once access, you want to allow it, and you should be good to go. An alternative way to open XBAR as well is instead of going through Spotlight, you can just open it from your command line. So just copy this, slash application, slash XBAR.app, and, well, let's just do it the old-fashioned way again. The XBAR is not open anymore. Oh, it's because I already opened it. And you can see that's open by looking at your Mac OS menu bar, and you'll see that XBar is here. And you'll see that there's refresh all plugin browser open plugin folder. So we want to write our own plugin, which we will add to the plugin folder later. And this will be a simple hello world, where we display hello world on your Mac OS menu bar. And so the first thing we want to do here is we want to create our plugin. So our plugin, the way the XBar plugins work is that the file is that it takes a name and then it takes like a time interval and then it takes an extension. So then this allows it to be written in, you know, here we're writing it for JavaScript, but you can also write it in Python or Ruby or Bash or anything else. And so let's call our plugin hello world. And then the time here, the way it works here is let's say one S. What that means is one second. So it will be a number and then a single character to denote whether it's in seconds, minutes, hours, or days. So if you want to do it for one day, that's 1D. If you want to do it for two hours, that's 2H. So here, the BitBar plugin gets refreshed every second. And then our extension, of course, is in JavaScript. So once we have that opened, the first line, and this is one of the gotchas of writing this, is this plugin also needs to be executable, so we want to ensure that we add a shebang. And this shebang pretty, pretty much means that we need to do uh, check the environment to find user local bin node. And so this is required of writing it like this, and you can't do node instead. And then all we want to do is, since this is a hello world, we want to just print out hello world just like that, and then we save it. And then once we save it, we also need to make this file executable. So we're going to do change mode, and then plus x for executable, and then our file name, just like that. And then we can tell it's executable by now lsing it, and you'll see that there's a x right on it. Excellent. And then now that we have the file, we need to then copy it to our plugin folder. So if we click on the XBar in the Mac OS menu bar, click open plugin folder. For our plugin to show and work, we need to make sure we add it in here. 
So a cool way to do it is we can actually open up the tab right over here. And then while it's opening, let me just close this folder again. You, you can grab the directory of that folder. And then instead of copying, since if you, let's say you change your plugin from time to time, and then you want to keep updating it, another way of doing it is you can create a symbolic link or you're creating an alias. And so it always references to the file that you have, the plugin that you have. And so you can see what the plugin directory is by looking at here. Pretty much that's the same thing as doing this library application support xbar plugin that's pretty much the same thing over here and so if we go back over here what we can do is we can now create a script that literally installs the plugin for you and I'll write a bash script for something like this so I'll name it install.sh for shell and then I will add the normal or expected shebang over here. And then to symlink it, what we can do is, is we can use the link command. And so we can do ln for link, and then dash s, s for symbolic, f to force in case the alias already exists. And then we want to link the plugin to that directory. And so the current plugin, let's use an absolute or full path and then so we'll take the working directory what we have right now and then the current file name of the plugin is this so let me just copy it real quick just like that remove that extra character and then we want to then link it to the destination and that would be mean going over here this thing so let me just copy that and then paste it and then I will replace since this is inside double quotes so we want to use the environment variable home which is the same thing as tilde and then since this is also in quotes we will actually want to remove the backslash since we no longer need to escape and then this will be the same name as the plugin file so let me actually create a variable let's just call it plugin file name just like that And then going back over here, plug in file name. And over here, call it plug in file name. And so this should link it. And then, you know, you can write a, a message to confirm that it's symlink correctly. So symlinked, plug in file name in plug in folder, just like that. So let's save it then quit it and then let's actually run it so let's actually once again change mode to make it executable for install and now we can simply just call it just like that cool and it says symlinked in plugin folder and now we can double check by going opening the plugin folder over here and then you'll see that boom right right at that see alias and it's referencing this file if we make changes to the source file, this will be updated as well, which is pretty cool. And the next thing you want to do is for it to work, you need to click refresh all. And once you click refresh all, you'll see boom, hello world, and it's displaying right over there. And so to show you how the plugin kind of works, just to show that it's that we can change that it can return multiple things, let's Let's do instead of console logging hello world, let's console log, let's save the date. And you'll see that the minute I saved, since this is refreshing every second, it's now showing it as a display it on our menu bar. So now you can think of all the types of different applications you can write using XBar. So here I'm just displaying something simple, but you know, you could write a a plugin that fetches data from the stock market that can get you the latest Bitcoin price, you know, stonks, for example. And so, you know, you can pretty much write whatever application you want. And there are further things that you can find in the XBAR 
documentation on like adding some menus, ways where you can click it to open things. So one more thing to note is that you can also open the plugin and you'll see that there is, it's lacking some information. If you want to add some additional information, let me go back over here to the documentation. Let's look at the docs over here. All right, and there's metadata. Let's click on metadata. And you can add this metadata to make your plugin show up with additional information. So for example, let's, let's add, you know, this stuff. Let's add, actually, let's add just some basic stuff, just the title and the version, for example. And so going back over here, let's paste it. And then let's turn this into comments. And then let's just save it like that. I'm not going to edit it. But then going back to the plugin, let's see what happens if I do refresh all. And then let me open plugin. Does this get updated? Actually, I have to click refresh here. Still says title goes here by Anon. Oh, well, at least the title goes here is now showing. And probably the version will show as well. Oh, well, while it's showing over here. So that's pretty sweet. And so you can, if you want to publish your own plugin, you can add this metadata so it's more visible. And there is a bunch of other plugins that you can find here. Like a lot of people have published their plugins. You probably don't need to reinvent the wheel for something that you're already doing. And then here you can actually change the refresh time. So let's actually change it to five seconds instead. And let's see, it's currently refreshing, but once it refreshes, then in the menu bar, you'll see that the plugin actually updates in terms of the interval in which it's refreshing. And then here you can click the different ways whether you want to do it by minutes, hours, or days. And then another cool thing is you can also turn it off, just like that. And then you can tell that it's doing it by checking the Open Plugins folder, and you'll see that it modified, like, you'll have the plugin name, the dot, the extension. The extensions have been changed because of that. So one last thing that you can do is, with this, you can uninstall the plugin just from over here. Alternatively, you can literally just delete that alias in the plugin folder, but this is the more recommended way to uninstall. And you just, once you click uninstall over here, it should work. And so, yeah. And so I would say definitely